When I was representing Ted, I lost friends because I represented Ted. Ted, as in Ted Bundy. The notorious serial killer whose killer good looks lured dozens of young women to a torturous death. And while he's not proud of it, criminal defense attorney John Henry Brown defended Bundy to the bitter end. I was single and Ted would call my house and say, this is Ted Bundy. And a woman friend of mine would answer the phone and go, it's Bundy and it's for you and I'm out of here. But he's no fan of the man who once admitted to having sex with the decomposing remains of his victims and keeping some of their severed heads as souvenirs. Bundy confessed to 30 vicious murders of young women and was executed in Florida. If you had to rate Ted Bundy on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst of evil, where does Ted Bundy fit in? 12. Bundy himself wasn't shy about his morbid acts. They handcuffed her and put her in the car. I knocked her unconscious and drove her into a small grove of trees. There, you're going to get me. He said he was going to get me, okay? You've got the indictment. It's all you're going to get. Let's read it. Let's go. I never believed that people were born evil. I still don't want to believe that. But I, uh, I changed my opinion after spending four or five years working with Ted. Ted was born evil. He was just plain evil. Another infamous client, Kandahar massacre defendant, Army Staff Sergeant Robert Bales, now serving life in prison. But Brown says some are more on the side of angels than devils like the barefoot bandit, Colton Harris Moore. We have all the police reports when they had to bring Colton home because he was wandering around when he was 12 looking for food. He was nowhere near a sociopath. But Brown's bread and butter are murder cases, and he tells Crime Watch Daily hair-raising stories you've never heard about the real Ted Bundy. You know, I have a release from Ted to speak about him. I can tell you things I wouldn't normally tell you about other clients. Now Brown is spilling lurid details about Bundy and other vicious clients in his recently published autobiography, The Devil's Defender, an apt title. Bundy's case was first referred to Brown as a young public defender in Seattle. But Brown says his most harrowing experience with his client begins after Bundy escapes from a jail in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, where he's being held on a homicide charge. He knew the jailer left on certain nights to be with his girlfriend, so the, one of the nights, Ted, pulls the grate off the ceiling, goes through the air ducts, then walks outside where one of his accomplices had left him a car. It's Bundy's second jailbreak in a matter of months. And this time, the consequences are fatal. Four more will die at Bundy's hands. There was a blizzard, like, you know, eight inches a day. He runs into a snowbank. A state trooper comes by and helps him out of the snowbank. He and did. this is Ted Bundy, the yeah. serial killer. Right. Well, of course, they didn't know he escaped because the jailer was not where he was supposed to be. From here, Bundy makes his way to Tallahassee, Florida, and tragically resumes his murderous ways. While he's in, in Florida, he kills at least, at least four people and brutally assaults some others. But then Brown says Bundy gets picked up by police on a minor charge. And here's a shocker. Cops have no idea they have Ted Bundy in custody. He's arrested for um, loitering, basically, at 2 o'clock in the morning, and he, they booked him in as John Doe. That's when Brown says he gets a call from Florida that lands him in the most bizarre dilemma of his career. The answering service says, Mr. Rosebud is on the phone and looking for you. And I knew immediately it was Ted. That was the name he was fascinated with. Part of me said, my God, thank God they've got him, all right? And then I couldn't violate the attorney-client privilege and call the police and say, Ted Bundy's in custody in Florida. So that was probably one of the worst nights of my life. Desperate, Brown actually considers going to Tallahassee and killing Bundy himself. And I thought, maybe I should just take him out. I knew if he got released, he'd kill again. No question about it. 
To Brown's great relief, police discover Bundy's true identity before he is set free again. Later, when he meets with Bundy in his Florida jail cell, he is once again blindsided by his client. He said, you know, uh, the reason you've been my legal advisor and lawyer for so long is because we're so much alike. I was 28 years old, 29 years old, and I went back to this cheap hotel room in Tallahassee and smoked like five cigarettes at the same time and looked in the mirror and basically said to myself, you know, what are you doing here? You're with this disgusting, evil person who thinks you're alike. Each time I'd kill someone, there'd be an enormous amount of, of, of horror, guilt, remorse afterwards. But then that impulse to do it again would come back even stronger. But true to his defender title, Brown soldiers ahead on behalf of Bundy, now charged with multiple killings in Florida, and he gets some stunning results. I did get a plea bargain for him. It was a plea bargain between Florida, Colorado, Utah, and Washington, that if he pled guilty, he would get the life. He finally agreed to that, signed the paperwork. As you might expect, there is no explaining the thinking of a crazed serial killer. Brown walks into court behind his client when Bundy stops and delivers another mind-blowing statement. Ted turns around to me and says, I'm not going to do it. So I'm not taking it. the plea. Yes. I deserve the most extreme punishment society has. I think society deserves to be protected from me and from others like me, that's for sure. Nine years later, Ted Bundy dies in Florida's electric chair. And according to his own confession, responsible for many more killings than he was charged with. One of the detectives says, well, we, you know, we've got you cold on 32 murders across the United States. And Ted says to the detective, you better add a digit to that. Brown says he began writing to work his way through the maze of evil and darkness epitomized by killers like Ted Bundy. I think the book was purged, and I never thought it'd be published. I mean, it was a journal, more or less. But he hasn't given up his day job. Does it bother you that now your nickname is the Devil's Defender? Most of my clients are not anywhere close to being the Devil. Among Brown's current clients, Tracy Nessel McNamara, a Washington woman who married her own uncle, and when he would mysteriously die, she would be accused of murder. You can see that full story right now on our Facebook page.